stuff that goes beyond just training. We talked a lot about my mental well-being and how we're going to adjust my training plan since this happened. That's one of the things that I love about the package that I took from Training Peaks, these conversations, because my program is something that I have a lot of confidence in and I know that my coach really cares. Take a look at what we talked about. Hey. How's your little wing? Huh. Well, I haven't started putting it through uh, the sleeve yet, see? Dude, that's awesome. I was really lucky I got surgery so fast. Really, really Yeah, that was quick. Uh-huh. It was a small miracle. Have you that's ever broken good. a collarbone before? No, like knock on wood, but. Do it real quick because I was talking about it just the week before it happened and I didn't know. Oh, it's <laughs> oh, so bad. Did you know like instantly you're like, oh, I just broke that? Uh, no, but I'm the type of person that remains like in denial until the very last minute. When I was laying on the ground, I knew something was wrong with my shoulder because it felt like numb. Yeah. But it wasn't an excruciating pain until like maybe like five hours later and I was still waiting in the hospital bed. And I started to cry a little bit. And I was like, I think I'm in pain. But yeah, you're like, this really hurt. Did you have to go in an ambulance or you just went there? Yeah, an ambulance came, picked me up. Canada, do they cover a bunch of it? Ambulance, yeah. you still got to pay for it. Otherwise, everybody okay. uses it as a taxi. But I think it's like 400 bucks or something. And you were just playing with some kid? Yeah, yeah. I was using this gravel ride as prep for sea otter, which yeah. is you know, like my next race next week. Um, and yeah, I scooted into this neighborhood. I was just going to like loop around and then meet up with everybody. But I saw this kid and his mom playing with jumps that they set up in the street. I was like, oh, cool. Can I try? And there were two of them. There was like a little one and a bigger one. And yeah. I remember getting up some momentum thinking left or right, left or right. Which one do I take? And I hit the big one. And I just thought I would like sail smoothly over and like fly and like land. But I just like hit it and didn't lift up on my bars. I just like rode over it as if it was like a small little twig or something. And that's it. Then I just ate the dirt. Dude, that sucks. Yeah. So I've been trying to like do some little like physio exercise on my own that I figured out. So like with, with this hand, like just to keep it mobile, I'm doing like exercises with a small yeah. weight like this. And then sliding my shoulder, like my arm back and forth like this. And yeah. then trying to do like some leg stuff without the weights that I have to hold on to so I can stay active. But I'm a little scared of getting sweaty because I have to keep this yeah. for a while. Can you go outside and like walk? Yeah, that's what I did yesterday. I went for like a two hour walk. I was feeling good enough to like move my whole body around. So yeah, just, yeah. I didn't want to do that, but that felt pretty good and I could stay active and stuff. Yeah. Walking will be your walking will be good. And it's just crazy. Like so many, I'm glad you got it plated. Like I was saying, like, it's going to be such a faster turnaround. I, I spoke to two orthopedic surgeons and both of them said that I kind of had the option of not even having the surgery, but I was just like, well, that's where all of the ligaments are in my shoulder. And it's, I'm not like somebody who just wants to sit at the desk for the rest of my life. Like I like, and I like doing cross training, like swimming, cross country skiing. That's a lot of shoulder stuff. So yeah. yeah. When do you go to Sea Otter? Tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> you're like i'm gonna fly when, when the crash happened i was like calculating do i think i'll be good enough and it's gonna be like perfect timing so i'll okay. be fine and did you uh, tell your doc like that you didn't have to take any like blood thinners or anything did you they just get, they gave me some like gnarly painkillers that i was taking and i got off them as fast as possible because they yeah, freaked yeah. me out and i don't want to get addicted to that junk yeah, but, but good thing i had them you have like some advice on what i should do to like what do athletes do when, when they wreck bones to, to stay active? And, you know, it's kind of a good time of the season, you know, there's never a, a great time, but obviously, you know, doing the sea otter gravel would have been super cool, but, um, you'd be kind of transitioning right now anyways. Yeah. Right. And, and if you kind of look at your season, you did a lot of really big things in a very condensed amount of time. Right. So that should, um, like make you feel better about it. Like you've done really good, good work. So having this respite, even like I said, you're going to go out and start walking. You enjoy moving by foot. Um, so you're already proficient. And so you can walk, you can hike. So at, in this, like, you know, one week post crash window, we look at the athlete brain almost more. So like we could care less what your T TSS is, or if you're doing any sort of effort, but like you said, like yesterday you went out and did a two hour walk. Awesome. You're seeing people, you're having that interaction with eye contact. You're in the fresh air, you're getting sunlight and you're getting out of your space that you've been cooped up in. So that's like number one, like move 
and move how you can. And then we begin to collect the intel, like walking for two hours at a moderate pace felt great. Like obviously you're not going to start running. You know, we could suggest people to like go to the gym and ride a recumbent bike. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Cause you're just yeah. sitting, like you could just sit. I think an elliptical trainer too. So I'm, I'm heading, when I head to California, there might actually be like a gym. So at least I can stay active a little bit, I guess. So the stuff that I'm doing like to move around and for endurance, it's not really to maintain anything. It's just for general health and like sanity stuff. Yes. Yes. It's to help sanity is like number one. And then number two would be like, you've had a lot of trauma. Okay. And we want all of your red blood cells or your white blood cells, pardon me, to go to that area and heal. So your body's number one job right now is healing. And so if all of a sudden you started to do a bunch of, um, you know, anaerobic type work or whatever on your recumbent bike at the gym, um, (laughs) that could take away from, um, the healing. A lot of athletes would be like, well, I'm not, I'm not doing that six hour gravel Fondo. So I'm going to pull back on nutrient nutrition. Yeah. That's a scary aspect too. Cause I don't want to like totally blow up and yeah. I, I haven't been on the leaner end of the scale lately anyway. So I'm like, Oh shoot. Like, is this going to be a disaster once I'm, in, you know, well, you're definitely not the outlier in that, that fear. Yeah. Right. And because if we start skimping on nutrients due to injury, you'll be slower to heal as well. That's a great point. You know, actually I'm forced to take a lot of time to prepare any food that I have or anything because of just like having one hand and at first I'm in a lot of pain. It's it's almost kind of cool to be forced to just slow down because I forgot how to do this. Yeah. You're like, wow, I could move slower and and cook stuff that takes a little more time. I'll be patient for a little while. Okay. You're giving me some, some great confidence. And then once this is over, I guess I can just like start building up some, some endurance and stuff for the, the longer gravel rides and races that are going to happen next year. Yeah, the patience is hard, but now you can start being creative. So Lex, you're in this really tight window of post-op where things feel very gloomy, but say if we literally had this conversation, even not even a week forwards, you're going to feel so much better. Maybe it's not that well, and you can even like at sea otter, you'll get like 10,000 steps a day at least. Yeah. Like it's October. And if you look back at the traditional cycling model, surfing, walking, hiking, everybody's in explore mode. And many riders feel as if they don't deserve that break anymore. But you do, because again, you did Ram, right? You did all these gnarly crits, right? You did big gravel races. And even though the calendar looked different, it's still a big tax on the system. And we're really struggling with athletes to, to cut it off. Right. We're like, we're like, stop racing. Just because somebody put something on the calendar, October 31st, doesn't mean you have to still pin a number on what's going to happen. Lex is you're going to get a really good reboot of social family time. And in Monterey, like enjoy, if you go to like a sponsored dinner, like eat the food, like you're going to soak it up. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, Joy, thank you. It's I, yeah, I feel like I'm going to be firing on all cylinders after this, like not only physically, but emotionally too. So far in the last couple of days, the break has given me some pretty good bright sides. So yeah, and it's true. It's only going to be in, in October that I'm going to be able to start riding and going, going at it a little bit harder again too. So it gives me plenty of time to prepare for the next season. Cause next season, you know, and you, we always want to give a little bit of your fitness back right? Otherwise, if you look at training peaks, it's like on the the performance manager chart, it looks like a flat line, Yeah. right? There's not a lot of ups. There's not a lot of downs when we're just race, train, race, train, race, train. So now you're going to get a dip. So you're going to give a little bit of that fitness back, but you're rebooting everything else. You're getting strong, healthy, good cells. And then it's going to be able to go up even higher than it was this last year. That's my goal too, because I didn't put too much pressure on because of the variety of the calendar and the unpredictability too with COVID and and not all the events coming back right away. So I just gave myself some slack and I'm, I'm really excited about like dialing in the performance a little bit more and sharpening up uh, next year. And now, you know, what's expected. Like, you're like, I've never done steamboat gravel. Like, what is this? You know? And, and I do have, I have a little library on training peaks. Like if there's like articles or like, I think it's even like Ted talks, like, cause I've had a lot of injured athletes. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, while you're like 
on the couch or so to speak, um, here's like a 20 minute activity for each day, like something to, you know, think about or see that, you know, other people, other athletes of all calibers and levels have dealt, have gone through this, you know, it's not like you're looping out about it, but it's kind of like reassuring or you get some different ideas or, you know, different insights. So we can put that up on the plan as well. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. We have to be creative in coaching. <laughs> like you are very creative. That's what, that's what I think is like so cool about the fact that we got matched together. Like, especially this, this season when I'm doing like all these crazy off the wall kind of things like yeah. Ram and then crits and then gravel and then road and stuff like that. So it's, it's cool. Cause it's not a typical season and being creative and flexible definitely helps too. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And it's funny, Lex, you'll see like in, I'd say like your run of the mill cyclist, it's totally normal. Right. Oh, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like our, our, our athletes that have like the nine to five job, like they're like, I'm doing a century next when like next week. And then, and then, but I want to like win the state crit championship two days later. It's like, okay, <laughs> let's see what we can do. <laughs> like, oh, that's awesome. That's so yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, you. I'm stoked you're feeling better. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. It helps too to talk to you and thanks for your ideas too. You're yeah. You're cool. welcome. Ping me anytime. We'll, uh, I'm fresh. I'm full of fresh ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Feel good to be back home. Like, Ooh, yeah, it was good. And, and actually right now I can't show you, but I'm going, I have a stack of stuff behind me. I'm going on a, leading a bike packing trip. Speaking no of doing, way. yeah. From Fruta to Moab. That is so cool. I drove that in a, in a van light van and I was like freaked out because there were no gas stations. There's not a lot between Fruta and no. Moab. Like I, I went into the first gas station rolling on like neutral on fumes. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. So it's, I'm leaving. Well, I should leave. I said I was going to leave on Wednesday, but it's a 10 hour drive and I'm going solo and all of it's like wide open, like, um, fire roads basically. Cause I mean, you could go like, there's the Cocopelli trail and like all the super technical stuff. Like, so I got like, um, so oh, this is like cool. the, the biggest saddlebag you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I have one of those and I have never used it before. Cause I've dreamed of doing bike packing. So I got one and then I still haven't used it. You're inspired. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing the test run. Everyone's like, I want to do that. So I'm going to do a test run. 